On Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, we read the story of the Akedah, the binding of Isaac, the almost sacrifice of Isaac by his father Abraham. And for modern people, this is a very disturbing story. We ask ourselves, why would God ask Abraham to do such a thing? And why would Abraham be willing to do it? It's very disturbing to us. Well, I think that archaeology can give us some insights to this. Remember, the story of Abraham is taking place at about 3500 before the Common Era. That is about 5,000 years ago. And the world was very different then. And before we go judging other people on that, we have to remember 5,000 years from now, people will probably look back on things we're doing and say, oh my gosh, how barbaric. So let's try and put ourselves into the mindset of Abraham, what it was like in the time he was growing up. The Torah tells us that Abraham came from the city of Ur. Now, Ur was located in what is now Iraq, and it has been excavated. Archaeologists have found all kinds of artifacts, all kinds of cultural clues, and indeed they have found evidence of human sacrifice, both child sacrifice, children, and adults. And this is the culture that Abraham is growing up in. Now, the Midrash tells us that he began to question the society that he was living in because all these things people were worshiping were limited. You know, he tried worshiping the sun and the sunset, worshiped the moon and the moon went dark, worshiped the river, the river dried up, etc. And realized none of these things that the people worshiped were really gods. So he calls out what is God and God calls to him Avram, Avram. And so God reveals himself to him, and Abraham now knows that there is one God. Now, did he necessarily know how God wanted to be worshipped? That's another question. Now, a while back, I took a course on the Akeda with uh, Rabbi Gedalia Fleer. He had an entire um, course laid out of all the different commentaries, interpretations, what it meant down through the ages, etc. And I asked him about this question about Abraham growing up in an idolatrous society where human sacrifice was normal, and could this maybe be why Abraham was willing to do it? And, and Reb Gedalia says, no, 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 no. He, he completely gave up, you know, he gave up idolatry. He was, I wasn't into any of that. Well, maybe. On the other hand, I would say people tend to do things that are familiar. And if this is what was familiar to Abraham, maybe he wouldn't question it. We come now to the question, how old was Isaac when this happened? Now, many Christian paintings portray him as a little baby or a toddler. No, that probably wasn't it. Jewish tradition says he was older. Now, once again, we have to take a look at the word na'ar, which I've discussed in previous videos. Uh, the Hebrew word na'ar is very flexible. It can be a boy, it can be a child, it can be a servant, it can be a young man. It's rather like the English word guy. You could say, ah, that guy over there. The guy over there could be like a, a sixth grader, he could be a college student, he could be an old man. It's kind of a general word for a male person. And in fact, in this story, Isaac is referred to as a na'ar, but so are the two servants that Abraham leaves with the donkeys at the bottom of the mountain. He tells them, you stay here, and uh, we're going to go up to the mountain and we'll come back. And he calls, he refers to them as na'arav, his, his, his na'arim, his servants. So, Josephus, the Jewish historian, calculated that Isaac was about 25 years old, based on chronologies in the Bible. Uh, other scholars have estimated it to be a little younger, maybe 18 or 20. Uh, other people have thought maybe in his 30s. But he definitely was old enough to know what was going on. And this raises the question as to whether he went willingly now, he asks his father, you know, here's the, the, here's the wood and here's the fire. Where's the sheep? And his father says, 
that God will provide the sacrifice, my son. Now, in English, there's a comma after sa sacrifice. It's God will provide the sacrifice, comma, my son, like he's talking to his son. But Hebrew doesn't have that kind of punctuation. So it is possible to read this as God will provide the sacrifice, my son. That his son would be the sacrifice. And then the next sentence says, and they went together. And so there are Jewish commentaries that read it this way, that Isaac did know that he was going to be the sacrifice. He was old enough to make that decision, and he went willingly. And this is where the story becomes, for some people, a, a symbol of personal sacrifice, that we must be willing to give our lives for God, either literally as martyrs or in terms of service, or that you give something up in order to serve God. You know, that there's the idea of self-sacrifice comes from the story of Isaac. Now, many people ask, why didn't God just give a commandment? Why all this drama? We have to remember that this is taking place in 3500 BCE, 5,000 years ago. And back then, the majority of people were illiterate and teachings were passed down with stories. And this is a very dramatic way of telling us that we should not do human sacrifice. You have Abraham thinks this is what he's supposed to do. He goes up to the top of the mountain. He lays the wood on the altar. He places the boy on the wood, ties him up on the altar, raises the knife, and then stop. Do not harm the boy. For now I know that you will you know, obey me. And that's a much more dramatic way of teaching than to simply say, eh, 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 don't do that. And for Jews, this story does mean we do not practice human sacrifice. This is the moment in human history, the turning point, when we turn away from sacrificing our fellow human beings to false gods. Yes, there's later on in the Bible, there are instances of human sacrifice, but they're always connected with idolatry, with falling back into, into pagan customs, with turning away from God. So in Jewish tradition, the story of Isaac, the Akedah, the binding of Isaac, tells us that we do not do human sacrifice. The sacrifices we make today are of our own time, our own energy, our own possessions, but not of people. And with that, I wish you a Lashana Tova, a good new year. May God write you for peace and prosperity. Mm -hmm.